morning, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Lab 207 webcast. My name is Mr. Kite, and I'll be hanging out with you as we continue on in our very long series about the living world. In hindsight, I'm kind of wishing I would have divided this series up into discrete topics, but here we are talking about adaptive immunity, specifically the receptors involved in adaptive immunity. immunity. So like always, let me get you your objectives, and then we'll start talking through some things. So by the end of this video, note or be able to do the following. First up, Understand the difference between a B cell and a T cell, and explain how B cells and T cells recognize foreign molecules. Essentially, how do they do their work? So, first thing we need to talk about is the general idea of a lymphocyte. Know that a white blood cell is also known as a lymphocyte. T cells and B cells are also known as lymphocytes. So lymphocyte, general term for many things. White blood cells, also a general term for many things. Um, to decide whether a cell is a T cell or a B cell, it's all about where they grow up. So white blood cells, lymphocytes, are all generated in the bone marrow. If they hang out in the bone marrow to mature, they are known as B cells, B for bone marrow. Other ones travel to the thymus gland, which is an organ that is located like somewhere here in your thoracic cavity, and they will mature there. If they mature in the thymus gland, they are known as a T cell. So B cells grow up in the bone marrow, T cells grow up in the thymus. And as we're talking about this idea of adaptive immunity, we're talking about our immune system's response to specific things, like our immune system recognizes this thing, it knows what it is, and it says, I need to deal with you. It recognizes, hey, you are a strain of the flu. I've seen you before, I know what to do with you. So this whole ability for our adaptive immunity to make specific recognition of a specific antigen is based on the lock and key protein concept. So there are antigen receptors on our T cells and B cells. The antigen receptors would be like the lock, if you will. Antigens are substances that are put out by foreign invaders in the body. So the antigen receptor recognizes the antigen that is put out by the foreign invader and binds to that antigen very specifically. The place where it binds on the antigen it, on the antigen is called an epitope. Just kind of stick that word in the back of your brain. But know just generally that the whole recognition thing is based upon lock and key fit. Talk about the B cell. Um, in a B cell, the way that their antigen receptor works is as follows. They have got like a Y-shaped receptor going on. Um, this Y-shaped -shaped receptor has got a heavy chain and a light chain. These are chains of polypeptides. Heavy chain is the bigger one, light chain is the smaller one. You'll see that these are labeled C and V. The C region of the receptor is constant, meaning that it is going to be the same all the time, and it's bound into the plasma membrane, so it's kind of like its anchor point. This region out here called the V region, the variable region, can be very different from one B cell to the next. This is what gives B cells their ability to bind to specific different types of antigens. So when the antigen comes along, the antigen will fit this shape right there and the B cell will be able to bind to it. So this whole thing right here, this is the antigen receptor, and this is what is responsible for B cells being able to recognize a specific type of antigen and bind to it. So after a B cell binds to a specific antigen, it is able to kind of initiate a response where antibodies are secreted. So antigens, like I said, are the, I don't know, nasty critters floating around in your bloodstream. Antibodies are shaped exactly like that antigen receptor on the B cell. So if you remember, our B cells looked like this, and they had that little Y-shaped receptor that was bound on the surface of them. Obviously, these Y-shaped uh, receptors are stuck to that B cell, but if an antigen hooks onto one of these, it initiates a response in the B cell. The B cell sends out a signal to other B cells, those other B cells will secrete antibodies that are free to circulate in the bloodstream. Those antibodies will then go out and attach to all of the antigens in the bloodstream, thus deactivating them. So this whole uh, initial reception sets off a cascade that leads to a response in the bloodstream. Talking about the T cells, T cells 
they're not dumb, but they are a little bit different. Where the B cells are circulating freely and are able to kind of recognize, hey, you're not me, I know that I need to deal with you, T cell needs the problem presented to it. T cells don't uh, recognize antigens that are just kind of floating around in the blood. Um, as far as their reception site goes, they do have kind of the same thing going on as a B cell, except for where a B cell has that Y-shaped uh, receptor that has two different reception sites on it. The T cell has one reception site on it. It still has a constant region that is bound into the plasma membrane and it's got this variable region that will change based on what type of antigen it's supposed to bind to. But like I said, these guys are kind of dumb. So what happens is if a cell is infected by a pathogen, that cell will chop the pathogen up inside of itself and then it will take that pathogen and take a piece of it and then display it on the outside of its cell. These uh, cells have got things called MHCs, which are major histocompatibility complexes. And MHC is the thing that takes the piece of the antigen and displays it on the outside of the cell. Once it's displayed on the outside of the cell, then a T cell can recognize it and say, oh, hey, you're not me. We need to do something here. So basically what happens is a cell that's been infected stands in, like, say, a lymph node or something like that with the uh, antigen presented on the outside. A stream of T cells file past it, and when one of the T cells uh, recognizes it, then a reaction is initiated. Now, one of the problems we have to worry about with the adaptive immune system is that there are so many variations in those antigen receptors that there's possibility that one of those guys could come out ready to attack cells within, the own, within our own body. So its receptor could be built such that it recognizes a signal molecule or like a, um, I guess, a self-identifying molecule on the surface of a cell, in which case it would initiate an autoimmune response and the body would basically attack itself. So what happens is as T cells and B cells are growing up, they actually get tested for self-reactivity. If they are found to be self-reactive, so if a B cell is found to want to attack or bind to um, receptors within the own body, those cells will go through apoptosis, which is programmed cell death. That means that they will actually be killed off so that they don't proliferate and go around attacking the body. It's a way of ensuring that our bodies are not attacking themselves all the time. And as far as initiating an actual immune response goes, and we'll talk about a response more in depth in our next video, but to get the ball rolling, basically what happens is this. Um, as those B and T cells are circulating through the body, there are antigens floating about. Um, there could be antigens floating freely, in which case our B cells are going to bind to them. There could be antigens presented on the MHC complex, in which case our T cells are going to react to them. But either way, when a B cell or T cell binds to an antigen, it sets off a response where this cell starts producing clones of itself. So if you remember, like B cells and T cells are specific to a type of antigen. When they get activated, they produce a bunch of clones that are also specific to that antigen. Some of those clones are going to be known as effector cells, which means they're going to go out and deal with the problem immediately. They're going to go, you know, either set off a phagocytic process or lock up the antigen so it can't cause problems. Somehow they're going to neutralize the situation. Let's say that these three go out and neutralize the situation. This guy right here, he's going to become a memory cell, which means he's going to hang out in the bloodstream and circulate through our body so that if this same antigen is recognized again, there is now a bigger army to go out and initiate a response. Um, memory cells are long-lived. They could hang out in our bloodstream for decades. So this is why if you have had some sort of sickness once, you're not likely to get it again. Or if you get it again, you're not going to get it nearly as severely because the body now has a bigger army of B or T cells that can go out and initiate a response that will deal with that infection. So sorry for the strange cut in the middle. I hope that this has given you a little more insight into B and T cells and the way they work. Um, like I said, we're going to take this video on adaptive immunity, like the receptors, and connect it to the actual adaptive immune response in our next video. So check that one out. Thanks for joining us on the Lab 207 webcast. My name is Mr. Kite. Hopefully we'll see you again.